How's it going, friends, and welcome to the channel. So, um, obviously, it's been a while since I've uploaded, um, another few weeks. Um, this should have been out uh, a while ago, but obviously, there's been uh, events happening. Um, as a lot of you guys will know, that um, lost my dad just over a month ago now. Um, so, yeah, it's been part of the, I say part of the problem. It's been some of the reason why you know recently stuff's been a bit bit scatty um, I think it may have mentioned it before that you know stuff's going on in the background and unfortunately it was it was that uh, says so lost some a couple you know just over a month ago now um, but I want to thank you guys uh, for, all the, for all the really nice messages uh, that you guys uh, had sent just really appreciated um, it helped a bit as well um, so yeah so I just want to say thanks uh, for that in in, in particular. Um, so I do really appreciate. It. I mean, you guys, um, you know, really supportive anyway. Um, you know, you keep you know sharing and liking the videos and you know supporting other ways. Of course, channel members. Um, you know, you guys also um, you know supporting uh, a lot as well. Obviously, a bit more uh, like financially like. Um, so really appreciate that. Um, again, uh, thanks to um, you guys. Again, really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, uh, hopefully moving on now and, and getting back into things and um, try and find some more normal. Um, I've got to admit, it's one thing I was, with everything going on, I know as bad as it's probably going to be sounding, but the one thing I could think of is like, I just want to make, I just want to be modeling. Because then I haven't got to think about any of this stuff. Because um, that's kind of, I think it's a lot, a lot of people. It's, it's you know, get you out of a horrible headspace and, and, and enjoying something and something that's nice. Um, so yeah, so obviously it's it's been a bit difficult. Um, so yeah, uh, so there are bits in this video, uh, main towards the end that I didn't film very well. Uh, so I, I'll apologise for that. Uh, I'll also have to apologise for the, the, the cold uh, sounding that I've got at the moment. Uh, I hope it's not too off-putting for you guys. Uh, so yeah, so uh, sorry about that bit as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, this video, which I'm sure some of you guys have been uh, looking forward to, uh, I've extremely enjoyed uh, doing this one. So um, so yeah, the new 148th uh, Airfix Seeking. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, since it was announced. Now, I'm not a big helicopter guy, but I love Sea Kings. Um, me and the other half, we go down Cornwall pretty much every year. We always uh, visit Cold Rose, and uh, I remember seeing Sea Kings down there all the time before their retirement, and uh, particularly the HU5 versions, the red and grey, which obviously this one is going to be. Now, I'll also start with uh, an apology uh, because when I announced that I'd pre-ordered the kit, I put out a poll asking you guys the way you wanted me to do it, because admittedly I was extremely torn on how to, to do this. Now, I put the option out of doing it as a service, so working helicopter sort of thing, you know, usual sort of weather and all that sort of business, or uh, to do it as um, basically an aircraft that's ready to be scrapped. So extremely heavily weathered and not, not, not really looking the way it's supposed to. Um, now, originally, initially, sorry, the, the poll was leaning towards the uh, scrapped uh, version. And then literally only just very slightly, uh, it tipped the scale the other way. Now, I was happy either way. But it says I was going to, you know, it was going to be your choice. And I've, I've re again, really sorry, I've completely, <laughs> completely ignored you. Um, and you can, I'm going to blame him, uh, but I also extremely thank him for this and uh, give him the full credit of this idea. Uh, James from To Bond to Go Model Works uh, suggested, uh, why don't you turn into a chicken coop? And that's where everything went out the window uh, with the poll. So again, I apologise uh, for that. Um, yeah, so sorry. Uh, this is now uh, a chicken coop um, and I'll tell you what doing it this way actually I've really uh, really enjoyed uh, doing 
Uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, doing it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be obviously this is a long video already, so I'm not going to babble any more uh, than I need to. Um, so, yeah, so just grab yourself a good brew and a bicky and uh, chickens. Right then, so we'll have a quick look at the kit. I'm not going to go too much into it um, because there's plenty of other videos uh, with it you know, showing the kit off. But I'll suggest a good one for you if you go to Man's Models. He's done a really good job uh, at showing the kit off and doing a full inbox review. So I'll put a link into uh, the description uh, for his channel and that video. But as you can see, the detailing is absolutely amazing. I am more than overly impressed uh, with the detailing that Airfix has done down from obviously the riveting details even down to the instrument panels and, and all them gubbins are absolutely fantastic and crisp uh, detail I kind of feel a bit guilty that I am going to destroy some of this uh, in a short while but as you can see all the detail uh, that really needs to be there is there and is as I says extremely crisp so for the first part of this, I will pretty much build it as it is uh, intentionally supposed to be built. So we're starting off with the, uh, well, I'm going to call it the cockpit rear wall, I suppose is probably the right uh, terminology for that. But see, it goes in, there's not really much to say about it, it um, it's there and it goes in. Um, we've also got this sort of like little, I'm going to call it a cabinet, technically it's a cabinet because it's got a door on it uh, that sits behind uh, the cockpit we've also got the uh, little uh, urinal tube there which is is a pretty fun uh, cool little uh, detail to to have in there but again even on this little section here you can see all the sort of stowagey bits um that go into that there and that little uh, cabinet there again exceptional detail i'm gonna probably say that uh, a fair few times uh, in this video also i've got the seats in there and i haven't actually put them in i've just posted in there for now because of the work I want to do around they do come with uh, like seat covers but the way they've done them here works perfectly for what I'm doing so I haven't got to try and do any extra detailing what I will suggest is when you're putting the seats together um, while the glue still wet just put them into their locating holes and it will fit everything uh, set everything uh, as it should be now to destroying the kit, um, as you can see I've removed some uh, of the panel, I have added some plastic card in there to sort of represent the uh, the sort of ledge that the instrument panel uh, will sit onto when it's actually fitted in, it's probably a little bit thicker than it should have been, probably been half that thickness uh, realistically, uh, but to be fair probably not really going to see it anyway. Um, I've also drilled out uh, a few of the instruments. Uh, giving that impression that when the aircraft was decommissioned, some of the pin instruments, pin instruments, some of the instruments were still needed um, in existing aircraft, maybe or something uh, along the lines of that. So, I says I've just got my little drill bit and just selected a few uh, and just drilled those out. You can also hear, see here that I'm using some Tamiya extra thin just to clean out uh, any of uh, extra material that doesn't need to be there. I've also drilled the holes out in the back of the panel. Um, didn't probably really need to do that, but I wanted to sort of give the impression that that where they were, it goes back a little bit further uh, into the aircraft. And I also wanted to add a few sort of chunks of wire in there, which I've you know not necessarily on the Sea Kings, but I've seen on other decommissioned aircraft where stuff's been ripped out. You can see a few of the wires. So for this, I just use some electrical wire. Um, pretty much just separate them at one end um, and then I've added a few singular ones into the main uh, instrument panel there as well again just simulating that these bits have been ripped out so I just want to quickly show you this radar panel um, which I was going to use originally but as you'll see I obviously didn't use it in the end but I just want to show the the fantastic detail um, that they've put into the kit so just a little just bang that in there. Uh, but as you can see the cockpit, all painted up. I've used obviously some of the decals. Some have had to cut out, obviously because of the missing uh, instruments. But as you can see, I've, it's painted up really nicely. Uh, painted just a relative, just off slight off black colour. And gave it uh, a wash with uh, Ammo's Stone Grey for black, as it's stated uh, on the bottle. Um, again, just to throw up, uh, basically just for dirt uh, purposes really. So anyway, we'll move on to the main, 
I'm going to call the main cab, main section of the aircraft. Um, paint it sort of like a grey, grey, blue uh, sort of colour. Um, did a pre-shade on it as well, and as you can see, I've added all the sort of scratches. Um, I've added a concentrated scratch there for where the um, radar station should have been. Uh, the same with the uh, pilot's uh, feet would have sat. Done exactly the same thing there. Um, again, just to give it a bit of an old, you know, it's been worn, you know, out of. <laughs> Had a few years uh, use. Now I've used the same um, panel wash pretty much throughout for the, the interior uh, of the aircraft because I actually thought, or I, I personally feel, that uh, this wash actually works quite well as uh, dirt basically, um, like a dirt accumulation. So I've, again, as you would with any panel liner, uh, put it in all the panel lines and uh, I've just let that to sort of pretty much dry off and then come in with a slightly moistened brush with uh, some uh, white spirits on or enamel thinners and just sort of smush them mostly into uh, the recesses and, and uh, those raised rivets um, but I also did in some part actually just sort of smush it a bit further around the area just again give the sort of impression of, of dirt because normally I'd use a dark Tamiya panel liner but I actually felt this worked uh, better as like a sort of a soily dirt uh, accumulation. Now as we come to the sort of inner walls, um, they generally had like this sort of like sort of soundproofing kind of fabric material uh, that was you know obviously lined the walls and I was trying to figure out the best way to, to sort of do this and I had this copper foil uh, sort of lying around and using it before uh, after I've uh, annealed it, as you can see, that's why it's a bit of a kind of like got some funky patterns in it. Um, that it was actually quite uh, a lot more flexible, and I got more play in it. So as you can see, I was able to, you know, create ripples uh, and stuff in there. I know it technically should have had more of a diamond pattern on it, but you're not really going to see that much of it anyway. But I, it's just one of the things I did it just to make it look better than just leaving it bare plastic. As you can see, as, as I've come to painting, I've done uh, a mottle uh, colouring uh, paint job, sorry, uh, with a couple of different tones just to sort of break it up. Again, it's not really going to be noticeable when it's finished, but it, it was more of my own sort of, uh, just it just made me feel better <laughs> doing this. And um, yeah, just giving it a bit of variation, uh, if, if any of it is uh, seen at all. But as also you can see, I've put some tears in there as well, which was quite good using this copper foil. So all I did was just basically sort of jammed the knife in there and, you know, just pulled it away um, a little bit and you got all those scratches. I also wanted to try and bring the aircraft to life a little bit and uh, I decided to add some lights. Um, so Airfix have actually detailed uh, some of the lights in, as you can sort of see that little bit of silver that I've painted at the top there. Those are actual like recessed lights that were actually in the aircraft. But I wanted to add uh, some extra ones um, that the farmer would have uh, added in. So we've got an extra light as well as um, a heat lamp. Um, so I just got some uh, really small uh, LEDs uh, for this. The lampshades themselves are actually uh, rifle, uh, air rifle pellets. So all I did was just cut the top off and with some green stuff sort of finessed it a little bit uh, towards the top. And then I also painted the inside with a chrome pen, just so it sort of uh, threw out a little bit more light. But as you can see there, all the lights working. Uh, at the time, I'm just, just pressing them onto the batches, so they are flickering slightly. Uh, but once they're all wired in, they will work perfectly. So now the attention turns to the main parts of the inside. So I spent a long time looking at uh, what sort of stuff go into chicken coops. Which, as it is, it just pretty much turns out mostly you need is uh, a perch stand, and uh, some like nesting boxes. So these were quite extremely easily made uh, using uh, matchsticks uh, for the perching. Um, once I did this one originally, it was way, way too big. Um, I was using a 48 scale figure to sort of gauge it. It looked all right at first, but it didn't work out. So I just cut it down a little bit, uh, took some of the lot off the back and once it's in, that actually looks um, a lot better than uh, what it did originally. The perch boxes, I just used uh, plastic card uh, for this. Um, nothing really special. All I had to do was make sure that the end walls 
uh, of it fitted inside the uh, inside of the aircraft and fitted to the walls properly. So um, that took a little bit of uh, a little bit of doing, using bits of paper to sort of uh, you know make a template for it and, and a lot of testing. Uh, for the size of it itself, I just kind of did everything by eye. Um, so there's no real exact uh, measurements for it, but I sort of did what kind of looked kind of right. Um, so I've also tried to make it look like it was made out of wood. And again, because I'm using plastic card, it was quite easily uh, to give a wood effect by using a razor saw. So you just roughly um, just scrape it across the top of it. You know, it gives a good wood effect. I know it's difficult to see here, but we'll see later on. Uh, once it's painted. I also need to try and decide what I was going to do to right at the back of the aircraft because it's going to be a massive empty space. So I sort of decided to do this sort of, I don't know, seg segregated area, sort of to lock a bit of a wall and uh, a, a door, which I'll put some mesh on the back. Um, I don't know, maybe it's a, an area for baby chickens or something. I don't know. It was just something I thought I felt like I had to try and uh, you know fill fill this space up with uh, with something so as you can see you know just a simple sort of paint job on it did a bit of dry brushing base coat to dry brush it um, I then used some Tamiya panel liner uh, just to sort of bring out all the detail and then I gave it another dry brush over the top just to sort of reinstate um, those raised areas I'd found this uh, mesh from somewhere which is lying around um, I think it's from a previous kit actually um, so just to give the impression of uh, looking like basically like chicken wire just gave it a dry brush uh, over with some aluminium uh, silver and then super glued it uh, onto the framework So the next thing I wanted to do was add some sort of like straw or hay uh, on the inside of the aircraft. So I got these uh, seagrass balls uh, from AK. As you can see, I just chopped them up, um, tried to make it quite um, as sort of fine uh, as I possibly could. Uh, again, trying to make mainly trying to keep it sort of into some sort of scale. And basically, I just jammed them in every sort of orifice I felt like I needed to jam them into. So obviously stuff like the uh, the boxes themselves, they'd obviously have uh, some straw or hay uh, in the bottom for the little legs to sort of sit in. Uh, these were all fixed in using AK's uh, sand and gravel fixer. It does tend to give uh, a bit of a shine uh, when it dries. Uh, fortunately for most of these areas, you're not going to really notice that, but I do add some to the uh, main floor uh, of the aircraft, so it's mainly around the perch stalls. So that will need a little bit of um, matte uh, varnish over just to take away uh, any of the sheen. The one thing I will say with the gravel fixer is make sure that the items that you want using that for, particularly on a painted surface, is make sure they're all in the right place. If you try and shove it around, it makes a right mess and it lifts the paint. But there you go, you can see um, basically uh, what the entire side uh, looks like and pretty much be the last time you'll see it. So next it was to time to button everything up basically. Um, this actually went together uh, really well. Um, the side walls and the roof are three separate parts but as you can see I've already glued two of them uh, together to make one. Um, that was mainly through painting. Um, and then just obviously see it stuck them all together. It makes this nice little sort of little pod uh, section. A bit like some out of Thunderbird 2. Uh, but this went together uh, really well. I actually kind of expected the issue, sub issues to be here. Um, but I didn't have any. Um, so it just fitted uh, really, really nicely. So before putting uh, the two main halves of the fuse lights together, there was a couple of details that needed to be sorted out, and it was these window blanks, because uh, of course, depending on which version of, you, of this kit you do, um, some of the windows have to be blanked out. So you get a separate piece, uh, as you can see, which slots in. This is the kind of probably the only actual kind of issue I had uh, with it, because you can see they don't really fill the gap. Um, they don't 
sit in there particularly well they actually sit lower than the main fuselage so there's a little bit of fettling um, to get them to sort of sit in line with the rest uh, of the fuselage uh, which I kind of got there but I still as I said had uh, some gappage there as well unfortunately so then it was time to crack out the uh, plaster putty uh, and just as you can see just push it into those gaps uh, let it go off a little bit then with a the damp cotton bud um, just remove uh, the excess I had a bit of a trial and error with this is mainly down to me um, than anything else uh, eventually I actually used uh, some sprue glue to try and uh, fill it all out uh, and a bit of sanding which obviously meant that later on I would have to rescribe uh, the details which wasn't really an issue because I did have a uh, rivet tool uh, I think this is probably the only bit that I kind of let myself down on with the kit uh, it wasn't until a lot later on that I realized I didn't do as good a job uh, as I thought but uh, with a bit of luck later weathering we'll uh, hide all that so you might have been thinking a little bit earlier so you've got all these wires where are they all going to go is it all going to fit well actually surprisingly it does there's enough voiding uh, around the the aircraft and the pod uh, that it all fits in quite nicely i did actually put a bit of a channel down the back thinking it may interrupt there but actually i didn't need to uh, but the little bit at the top with the sort of grating which is part of the um for the tail rotor um, i had to cut a little bit at the bottom of that but um that was all i really had to do it all fitted uh, quite nicely but before we have to um well actually before we put the two halves together it needs to do the exhausts um see these fit together quite nicely within the instructions it calls not to glue this uh, section in because it does actually give you a good little bit of playroom and um, put the two halves uh, together so you can adjust it about a little bit and make sure everything is in the right position uh, before gluing I admittedly did have a little bit of, um, I didn't quite actually fit them very well, so I do have a little bit of a gappage later on. This was more down to me than actually uh, the kit. Um, it, just, it was just one of those things. Now as we move on to the sort of the lower half, um, you can see we've got these nice clear parts uh, underneath the uh, chin, some of the uh, landing lights I think they are. Um, so what I did with these, I just painted the back silver, uh, used a chrome pen. Uh, for this and also drilled a couple of small holes to sort of give the impression of, uh, of a bulb in there um, which actually looked quite good uh, until you looked at them square on and then I actually realized that uh, one of them wasn't actually dead center so it's got a bit of a kind of like a gammy eye uh, sort of thing going on but this part fitted quite nicely onto the uh, lower half uh, lower section of the hole because the main fuselage is made up in three separate bits obviously the two sides and what well, I'm gonna call it a belly pan uh, if you like because it's just like one massive <laughs> one massive part and that fits on uh, again really nicely now for across the uh, spine where which this is the uh, for the uh, gearing uh, tail gearing there is a part that needs to be removed uh, but I would actually suggest to do a bit of research on the version that you're doing because um, I'm doing one of the later versions uh, but actually is later than the later version that's in the kit um, that will become a little bit clearer later on so I actually didn't need to remove this part but it, it was one of those things I didn't decide until a bit later on but all I had to do was just sort of rescribe a couple of the panel lines uh, clean them out with a bit of glue and then paint it on the paint it on stick it on the back uh, of the aircraft and one of the good things about this, a lot of the stuff, there's, there's very little seam line work that has to be done uh, on this aircraft. So this, this section here, that covers that seam. Um, on the front where the uh, scoop or the, uh, the intake, sorry, this section here, uh, if we wait for the second, um, you don't need to worry about any of the seam lines there. The only bit you have to do really is uh, underneath uh, the tail section. That's, that's all that really... Um, you actually have to clean up so seam wise on this kit is literal bare minimum on it and it, it, it's great because it's one thing I hate having to do uh, in modeling one thing I will suggest uh, is this particular part with the gearing head I'd fit this in at the sort of same time as the two fuselage parts go on because I found it a bit of a, a fettle 
try and uh, get this uh, to go in. Now the main engine panels, again these did fit really well but again because I obviously did something wrong putting those exhausts in, the opposite side to this um, didn't kind of fit very well. Um, so I did put a bit of uh, putty in there to sort of try and hide that off but you know if you think about it you know these aircraft especially out of service stuff gets banged about and the panels don't fit properly anyway so that's the excuse I'm going for. So at this point I start moving on to doing the sponsons these are really again really easy to put together you've got the main wheel bay uh, which contains of about uh, six parts um, and then you've just got the two sides of the sponson uh, to fit. There's one bit at the front that goes and there's a panel that on the top there as you can see that needs to be done. But I wanted to put these uh, together um, and just loosely, well, glue the main strut to the sponson. Um, but I didn't actually glue it to the model itself because I, I thought that when we come to painting this, it's going to be easier that this section uh, of the aircraft is completely separate and I'll glue it on uh, after paint. So before I can put the uh, main cockpit uh, canopy section uh, all together, I gave the uh, inside of the uh, canopy um, a smoke uh, paint job because uh, the top of the window I know is taint uh, tainted, tinted. Um, I'm quite convinced actually it's a, a kind of a green colour uh, but I was talking with Nigel, probably uh, from Nigel's modelling workbench, he'd done a bit more research than I had, and he, he said it was more of a smoke colour. So, got on his recommendation. I don't think it really matters uh, all that much. I mean, they probably could have used both. Um, but yeah, so I just uh, sprayed it with uh, some uh, Tamiya smoke and using some Tamiya thinners. Um, I'll probably try and water it down rather than using the thinners because you need to give it a bit of a coating to stop it from sort of uh, fogging. Um, it's something I'm not used to, to doing yet, but it looked okay, I think, in the end. Now, by this point, there are actual uh, canopy masks for this kit. In fact, I think they come out a bit about a week later. But it's really easy to do yourself, uh, in all honesty. As you can see here, all I've done is put some Tamiya masking tape down, burnished it in with a cocktail stick into the corners, and very, very carefully just followed... Uh, around the, the, the canopy lines with uh, a sharp blade. Obviously you've got to be careful because of course if you jump out then you can obviously at risk at scratching uh, the glass. Now with the top canopy section um, I had to I put them in and actually made a bit of a slit and then folded that back down and, and then worked my way uh, around that um, but it worked um, somehow and I was <laughs> extremely chuffed uh, about that. You'll obviously have to make some uh, adjustments and, and fettle for, with a few bits around the windscreen blades. Um, but again, generally, it is quite easily uh, done without uh, happening to uh, you know, buy masks uh, for the kit. Now, I've also been very daring and used some uh, Tamiya Extra Thin uh, around uh, the canopy to, to glue it in. In fact, actually, this is quick set so it's a lot more stronger so you know be, be extremely careful uh, if you use that or just use some with some like white glue uh, which will do as well the uh, side uh, viewing window which is domes as you can see um i, I gave that a, a taint a tint tainting bloody hell a tinting uh, as well uh, just because i think it was supposed to be i can't remember what i think it is but i did it anyway um, it's only uh, slight so it's not really noticeable um, either way this did take a bit of uh, going uh, I actually took to, to mask up so I actually mostly used uh, some uh, mask all uh, for this because of course that dome section is, is a bit difficult so yeah, it was a mix, mix of tape and, and mask all to, to do that above that window there are two grab handles I felt that the kit ones were way too thick and understandably they, they can be because you know it's difficult to um, mold uh, these sort of bits but as you can see I've just used some copper wire cut those down uh, and uh, just super glued those into the original uh, holes that they should have got into now the only extra sort of detail that I added 
uh, to it, which I have seen on the original ones. Is this kind of, I, I don't actually, if anybody actually knows what this is, please tell me, because I'm not, I, I don't know what it is, but it's like a bit of rope uh, that's sort of attached uh, just underneath the cockpit and it's about halfway uh, underneath uh, the fuselage. Uh, but for whatever it is, uh, I used, uh, again, electrical wire, twisted it around to make it look a bit like a rope, hooped it over and then used some Tamiya masking tape as because uh, it's got like a sort of a taped binding uh, around the top areas obviously assumed to stop it from uh, fraying there was also two connecting wires at the top uh, of it uh, and one on the lower uh, section uh, i'm not actually sure if i've redone the fittings right i struggled to find some good photos of this but uh, i think to me it kind of it's just one of those things it it, it just looks right so i'm quite happy uh, with that uh, as it is but it says if anybody can tell me what the hell that thing is and what it's used for that would be great um, because this says I don't know so at this point we've jumped ahead a little bit I've painted the main uh, fuselage I've used a relatively lighter grey than I should have done uh, mainly because of the weather I'm going to do later on will uh, darken it slightly I've also kind of gone on what, what looks more right to me than the photos I've seen of the actual aircraft and when I've seen the actual aircraft so to me this is quite close to what it should be in my opinion um i've also done uh, a pre-shade um sorry post shade uh, as well just to sort of lighten it as again more of a, uh, a fading uh, of the paint uh, after this aircraft being left outside for a long period of time but as we move on uh, to the front and sort of tail section i've masked uh, all this off uh, to the best that i could and actually did for once quite a good job uh, only a couple of minor and literally they were quite minor bleeds um, underneath but as you can see I've uh, followed it down from sort of what like the instructions and uh, look at the actual aircraft you can actually follow a set of rivets uh, down uh, the side of the fuselage and it's pretty much quite easy to, to, to sort of bring it straight across to the, the center of the aircraft if you use two separate pieces of tape as you can see I have done it does make it a lot easier for these to sort of line up and be you know a nice straight line as we get to the tail section um, I've used a thinner bit of uh, masking tape because I find the thinner the tape is it's easy to sort of maneuver it around um, really awkward uh, raised uh, surfaces so as you see I've done it down to this I don't know it's like a fillet I'm not really sure what this long strip that runs down the side <laughs> Uh, is but it says using a thinner bit and uh, a decent sharp pair of tweezers are managed to force those uh, into the sort of uh, corners uh, of that fillet thing uh, and then again really easy to follow this uh, down the sort of uh, joining part for the main fuse lies to the, to the tail section just follow it dead center down the middle it's really easy uh, to follow this one uh, all the way down So as we get onto the main paint, um, obviously as I'm doing it in the later versions, which is the HU5. Now I'm doing a later version of this. So the kit version um, is uh, of the one uh, that was at Cold Rise in 95, uh, which has the gray uh, framework around the cockpit. Also has the, um, I think it's an, like an air deflector at the front as rather than having the filter. Now. Uh, X-Ray Victor's Triple Six actually did have uh, this paint job uh, with a full red canopy uh, cab and also with the box filter. Uh, but I'm actually doing um, the same, technically the same version, but a different reg. So at some point, and I, I didn't do enough research on this, if I'm being totally honest with you, but at some point, Triple uh, Six uh, got shifted somewhere else. And another one got brought in to replace it, which was uh, X-Ray Victor 699, uh, which made change the decals of this a lot easier. Um, and uh, actually had full red cab uh, canopy. Uh, can oh, Christ, cab. Cab, it's a cab, not a canopy. I suppose a canopy. Anyway, pulling hairs. Um, and had the box filter on it. So if I show you literal two photos and you tell me, you know, you see if you can tell the difference between the two. So if we first just take note of the numbers, 23, 8, 2, 3 on the nose there. You know, exactly the same, both these photos. Um, it says 
triple six had uh, the same markings later on but these are two different aircraft you see the, the second photo is actually uh, x-ray Victor 699 so at some point these two aircraft have been swapped around and changed and whatever um, so I've gone for that one um, obviously most of this build pretty much in the paint job of this in the end is kind of a little bit of artistic license though I know um, 699 was uh, retired pretty much was stripped um, but I think was later used uh, elsewhere maybe but I'm not completely 100% sure but it says for the all intents and purposes of this build it's kind of loosely based off um, an airframe now the other thing I noticed when I was doing a bit of research of abandoned uh, aircraft uh, or sea kings is that the air sea rescue was uh, completely blanked out as well as the Randall. Not quite sure uh, why the case this is. Uh, not really fussed if I'm being completely honest. The only thing that he's kept uh, on there is generally the aircraft's uh, registration. Because of course, if the aircrafts get shifted about and moved, they you know they want to know what is. It's a bit same as a bit like the DVLA um, when they're looking for your car, whether it's on the road or not, that sort of thing. Now, as we move on to around the exhaust area, um, there are decals for this part, um, but this side's not too bad. The other side, on the other hand, different situation altogether because you've got that bump uh, at the top. Um, it was going to be easier to decal, uh, sorry, uh, spray it rather than uh, use the decal. But as you can see, I'd used a thin bit of masking tape uh, to, to trace around, just following it on the instructions and some actual reference photos of where it should go. It's quite easy. Um, to do to be honest with you it's not as daunting as you think it may be uh, masking these parts off as you can see I also did the uh, black bit around the side there where I think it's the uh, sort of like grab handles uh, up the side there that was again masked it wasn't really difficult to do at all but as you can see there all the uh, you know blanked uh, AC rescue bits uh, on there which I got from the reference photo the next thing I want to do, which actually they do have a decal for, is these sort of uh, step areas. There's one of the sponsor on the inside of that bit there that I'm doing. Um, I just used some uh, Tamiya putty and some Tamiya actually thin, just to make a kind of like a, a grip tape, which I also did uh, that runs across the sort of spine towards the back of the uh, tail section to again give that sort of grip tape uh, finish. Uh, but as you can see now we've moved on to uh, the decals um, very few of them <laughs> I actually had to put on because of course I blanked uh, most of this off so it was only really sort of like the numbers that to go on and some of the uh, sort of like emergency uh, sort of stuff on the danger at the tail and again like I said because I've changed the prefix of the aircraft sorry the registration of the aircraft uh, I just cut the uh, last two sixes uh, turned around to make a 99 and uh, yeah, that was uh, probably the easiest uh, uh, aircraft uh, number change I've ever done. Of course, the decals are uh, cartographed, so we know the story with these. They're brilliant. They go down really nicely with like no issues whatsoever. Once uh, I've got all the decals done, uh, I felt it's time to sort of, sort of start positioning uh, the base. Now again, still at this point, I hadn't put the sponsons on. They are literally just fitted uh, on, they're not glued at all. And I just use it in this state uh, just to sort of uh, get the base sort of started and ready, which we'll get to in a moment. So as we move to the weathering stage, um, I've used, as pretty much always, uh, Tamiya Accent Panel Liner. Now what I've done with this one, I've actually uh, thinned it down quite a lot. And I kind of did it in a couple of mix of sort of applications in a, in a fashion or styles, if you like. Um, so for the bottom half uh, of the aircraft, I literally just slapped it all over and sort of spread it around because it's going to be close to, to the ground. It is actually going to sit quite close to the ground. So it's like kind of like, you know, maybe a bit of mud spray or something <laughs> down the bottom. Uh, but pretty much everything else, I kind of did it the way as I'd, I'd normally do it. Just follow all the panel lines uh, up on the, the higher part of uh, the aircraft making sure I got basically every rivet I could uh, possibly hit and uh, normally what I do is I just sort of work my way around the panels uh, pushing the uh, thinner uh, sorry pushing the panel liner into uh, you know the panel areas uh, but what I actually did uh, in the end was again 
just slightly moistened uh, brush with uh, some enamel thinners on and just basically pushed it everywhere. Worked in small sections, um, drawn it off with a, a, a paper towel, but it actually kept sort of, um, you could see the, the, where the panel line should be, so that kind of worked. Um, I was just kind of rushing it a little bit at this point, uh, <laughs> so just getting it done. Um, the exhaust stains, I uh, again used Tamiya uh, smoke uh, for this. I've temporarily glued the door in place. I've also marked, uh, masked off the um, painted uh, section at the back that has obviously been repainted later to, to remove the uh, roundel. And uh, so yeah, just mapped it out uh, lightly and then just sort of went basically ham on it uh, and uh, you know give it that classic you know, soot filth uh, look that these uh, these old girls used to get. Now, with the rest of the weather effects that I'll be doing, all the masking uh, needs to come off. And uh, I, I was quite surprised myself. Um, these went, uh, this actually went quite well. Uh, I did expect bleeds, but actually I had uh, no issues uh, whatsoever. You will see there's a scratch in the top of the uh, cab there. That actually, unfortunately, um, was the way the kit come. Um, I did get in touch with one of the guys from Airfix um, about it. I wasn't bothered with replacement because the way this model <laughs> was going to go. Um, but yeah, it was an unfortunate um, happening. But again, for what I want this to be, it didn't actually really bother me uh, all that much. So, as you can see, I've put a bit of tape uh, underneath that sill, which I should have done originally before doing the smoke, and that was just to sort of do some uh, after effects of like uh, some oil and grease uh, that would have seeped out. Everything else from now on is pretty much uh, algae. Um, yeah, uh, making it green as grubby as possible. And again, this was really easily done. No special uh, uh, paints or anything for this. It's literally just a really green paint um, mixed in with some water There's no thinners with this just just, just using water um, the model itself has got a uh, satin finish on it so that will slightly stop it from actually sticking really well to the model because obviously if you've got a matte model uh, it will stick um, you know to it because obviously all the little micro grooves in there if it was too glossy this stuff will be going all over the place and pulling uh, but with the satin uh, varnish um, as you can see I can sort of do all my streaking effects and you know smushing stuff about basically uh, without it uh, sticking and it gives me enough time to you know move the paint around get it in the right positions I want get the streaks uh, in the sort of uh, positions I wanted as well and in sort of like the nice sort of drippy uh, patterns <laughs> that I wanted uh, on it obviously giving that impression of you know sitting out in the open for a long time um, rain obviously ruined down pulling all this uh, algae down uh, the side of the aircraft Which again I've done exactly the same uh, on the canopy um, but with that I used a dry uh, brush to sort of uh, remove some of the paints. I didn't want it completely covered uh, in algae so I just used a dry brush to remove some of that I did do that the same here uh, on some of the sponsons uh, as well uh, but yeah it was just sort of just moving the stuff about and making it look like algae is just accumulated uh, over the years. And again, I've got these from uh, references of other aircraft and, and some actual uh, uh, seekings that have been left out in the open for a long period of time. So the last couple of details I need to add uh, was using uh, some stretched sprue. So there's some little supporting sort of braces within the steps. The handrail, it's not a handrail really, but there's a sort of like a rail thing at the side. The, the, the posts there are actually uh, some photo etch bits that I found that actually fitted uh, the shape right. Um, I did actually make them uh, out of stretch, stretch sprue, but I broke one and then for some reason I couldn't redo it. So I just stripped it and I found those and reused them. Um, but I've used those for the rails that you've seen in a second. Um, also used them for the hydraulic lines on the, um, uh, the hook. Uh, thing uh, there as well because of that thick thickness you can bend them around quite easily uh, or again you're still using the stretch sprue you made that little uh, support uh, for the door uh, and again there's like um, I've been saying it's a handrail it's not really a handrail uh, it's like uh, just a bit of wire uh, that sort of helps pull 
uh, the stairs up and also stops them from going uh, too fast. They're obviously flexible. Um, and yeah, a bit of stretch sprue. Uh, so I did actually use plastic glue for that uh, and just painted them. Really simple. It is a bit fiddly getting the thickness right, but you know, it, it's a bit of practice and, and getting there um, with it. It's, it's just one of those things you've got to keep, uh, keep trying. The exhaust was the last thing that I actually did, and I wasn't really sure how to do them. Uh, they obviously wouldn't actually be rusty, but I did use um, a rust type pigment powder uh, mixed with some black soot um, just to give an exhausty type effect. I know it's not quite the right colour, but I felt that that worked um, for me and give it that sort of old. I've been sat outside for way too long and I'm, I'm, I'm looking a bit rough. Uh, so I was quite happy with that. I think that worked um, um, myself uh, quite well. So anyway, that's the Sea King itself uh, finished uh, in this part of the build. It's now time to move on to the base. But I think what I'll do is I'll actually give you uh, a couple of glamour shots of the Sea King uh, itself before it goes onto its base. So as you saw a couple of moments before, I used some uh, XPS foam uh, for this and using a hot wire tool uh, for whatever capabilities it had at cutting some of the corners off. Most of which, as you can see, I've had to use uh, a knife uh, to cut it, but you see it cuts really nicely. Uh, if you want to smooth it out, as I have done here, just use uh, something like a butane torch, very lightly, um, as not to catch fire. Um, I've also used a few bits to sort of build up uh, the terrain as well as taking some of it away. I've also used some plaster card to frame the base, which I roughly sketched out the sort of dips and bumps of it and then used a, a knife just to smooth that off. For the main base um, of it, I've used uh, terrain mud ground from AK. Again, just smushed that all over the place, um, getting it up as tight to the uh, border as possible um, to try and make it look that actually the base is not a base, if that makes sense. So you can see there, there's a couple of little blue spodges that are left. They are for where the wheels are going to sit, because they're going to sit quite low uh, into the base. I've also marked out mainly for the grass uh, part of the uh, scatter. I wasn't overly happy with how clumpy actually the base looks, so we used some sort of stone scatter um, just to sort of, you know, make it look a bit more, uh, I felt a bit more realistic, uh, particularly in the scale. Um, yeah, I just wasn't happy with it, just the main uh, terrain paste. Um, but as you can see, again, some Hodge Podge all over using some Status Grass and the Static Grass Applicator. Nice cheap one, uh, they don't need to be fancy expensive. Um, but while it's once you've done it and it's all still wet, pretty much I did this immediately after. Uh, got a vac, stocking, vac'd it all up, obviously it removes all the excess. Um, and you can catch it in the stocking so you can reuse it again. But it also pulls the static grass up a little bit. So it's not, because uh, sometimes it tends to just sort of lie uh, a little bit flat. So if you use uh, a vac, um, it will lift lift them up and actually make it look like it's standing grass um, rather than just all flat and weird. Uh, but also added uh, some longer uh, uh, tufts of grass, uh, particularly around the base. Uh, of where the Sea King is, obviously it's going to be an area that probably either the grass can't be cut or the animals can't chew on it very well. Um, so, you know, got some clumps, again, bodged a little hole in, used some uh, Mod Podge uh, for that and just and just stuck them in. Um, also placing the uh, Sea King down, which I had to do in a few areas, because I've put them a little bit further underneath uh, the aircraft. So I just got in behind them with a, a, a pokey stick and just pulled them out. Uh, so I left them to dry, then I removed the uh, helicopter later on uh, to, to, to paint the grass. But I've also added a few uh, pre sort of tufts. Um, I again, used a bit of Mod Podge underneath that just to um, make sure they stay uh, fixed uh, to the base. Now, as it is, actually, it does look all right. Uh, I could have actually just left it there, but I decided. Uh, no, I'm going to paint it. I'm going to just paint it all, keep it, make it all kind of like uniform, 
um, and I kind of quite like doing it uh, as well. So, as I says, everything's all sort of dry at this point, and I can remove uh, the seeking for painting the base. For a base cut, I've used Mr. Surfacer uh, Mahogany uh, for this, uh, and just, just basically gave the whole thing uh, a good coat. And this will act as a bit of a, uh, a shadow uh, layer as well. And I just went in with uh, a mix of greens, uh, really. Uh, went to, started off with quite a dark green, and then sort of working my way up into some uh, quite light greens, almost like a yellowy green. Uh, once all that was done, I just uh, airbrushed in some muddy colours, uh, just for the, the, the areas that obviously haven't got grass on them. Uh, so yeah, um, I'd also added some stones which I didn't mention earlier. These are actual bits of cork um, and I'll just dry brush those with a, a stone colour. Now there are other some bits of random bits of scratter, scratter, scatter, like these uh, metal plates. Um, so I've just used some enamel uh, rust tones and just wet blended those in uh, again just to make it like a bit of metal that's been sat around for quite a long time um, I've also made uh, a trough um, just using some plastic card make a simple uh, sort of box shape um, and that's it. it you know just making sure you get into the sort of right scale it was a bit of guesswork but I felt that this kind of was kind of right um, all I needed to do then was just sort of sand the sides added a couple of little details um, just to make it look like it's a metal uh, metal trough. Uh, I pretty much did the same for this Belfast sink, which was about double layered uh, plastic card, uh, and then just sanded uh, just to make it look um, round and sinky, uh, basically. Um, this sort of like I'm gonna call it a food dispenser because I don't know what the, the proper proper title for it is, um, but this was just a bit of brass uh, sheeting um, that I've just wrapped round. Um, there's a there's a rod up in the middle and actual the base of that is actually a, a wheel rib um, which later on I'll put some bit of uh, scatter in there to make it look like a, a feed um, but all this was based with um, gun metal uh, pretty much stippled on as you've seen and then used aluminium uh, on top and then just added some some rust I've also added some uh, trees I'm not going to really go into these because I, I kind of just do these and just sort of turn out but effectively, uh, the main stem of that is an actual bit of uh, root. Uh, the branches themselves are sea foam, which is super glued on. And yeah, painting wise, I've just sort of slapped a few paint brown sort of tones on it, uh, gave it a dark wash, and then dry brushed over the sort of um, raised areas to give that you know, sort of barky looking uh, effect. Uh, and again, Mod Podge, uh, slapped all that over the top and then uh, use some um, Woodland Scenics uh, fine turf as sort of like the bush uh, canopy. I also found this uh, figure, which is this is the guy that I've been using for um, uh, most of the sort of sizing of this. Of course, he's, he's, he's a rough guy. He's got his forage cap on and uh, did, did want that. Um, it just didn't make sense really as a, as a farmer to have a forage cap. Uh, so with some green stuff, uh, I made him a forage cap. Also, by the way, this is James. Uh, I've decided because he's the one that gave us the idea. I, I have named this little figure after him. So for the guys that are probably the most important part of this diorama are the chickens. Now, Alex from Man's Model Moments uh, really kindly printed uh, these uh, chickens uh, for me. And uh, they are really, really good. Uh, obviously, you can see we've got a couple with uh, a little leggies on and a couple sitting down. So, yeah, they're really cool. Um, I actually quite enjoy painting them. I've never really done uh, animals before. Uh, I've spent hours reference for, getting reference photos for these. Uh, but I'm actually quite chuffed actually how they, they turned out considering I've not really done anything like this before. Not really sure how to, to do them. That's why I didn't, uh, I didn't video it because mainly it was just easier for me to get on uh, and actually paint these and try and get them right than trying to show you how I did them. Um, but yeah, so I apologise for that. Uh, but it was just, just a little bit easier for me to, to, to get these right and just do them off camera. Anyway, all that's left to do now is put all this together. Okay then guys, so it's nearly time to show you uh, the finished uh, model, but of course as always, just before that, I wanna thank you guys ever so much 
uh, for watching uh, the video also uh, for you guys supporting me and uh, the channel if you'd like to support further there are links in the description uh, down below massive shout out to uh, the channel members for their continuing support as well massively appreciated not much appreciated for some reasons what i wanted to keep saying in the last video but greatly appreciated and of course i do obviously appreciate everybody just even just for watching it liking it and sharing it because that helps um grow uh, the channel um, as well so again thanks ever so much for that again i i hope you've enjoyed uh, the video so far i do hope you actually enjoyed the entire uh, finished uh, project this is i've really really enjoyed uh doing it this way uh may upset a few people again like the uh, chipmunk did uh, i don't know we'll have to wait and see but you know in the comment section please let me know uh what you think how you think i've done the model uh, and all that business um be greatly appreciated i'd just like to know what you guys uh, think um i'm not really bothered about having my ego straight so i'm just really interested in, in what you guys think of of obviously what I produce. So anyway, last time, thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you again soon.